Hey everyone, thanks for joining me for another episode of Let's Crack Zodiac. I want to welcome all the new viewers and subscribers. Thank you very much for coming by. Anyone who wants to help support this channel can click the subscribe button, hit the bell to get notifications, or get on the mailing list. The address is in the description. Previously on Let's Crack Zodiac, we showed our confirmed solution to the Zodiac's 340 cipher. When I started this series, I had no idea we'd be talking about a confirmed solution as soon as episode 5. I used to joke around that a solution would be a nice season finale, but now it looks more like a mid-season plot twist. It still seems very surreal to me, like maybe I only dreamed that it happened. But it did. And the other thing that makes it strange is that even though the cipher was written 51 years ago, it feels like Zodiac has sent us a new message. He mailed taunting letters for a while, many years ago, and then stopped. Now we have this newly discovered message from the Zodiac, like a time capsule. So it is like he's speaking to us again. Anyway, when the episode came out, it didn't take long for the news to go viral. We expected the news to make a big impact, but I continue to be surprised by how much interest there is in the Zodiac case. Not just here in the United States, but all around the world. The first media outlet to pick it up was the San Francisco Chronicle, the newspaper that was often the target of Zodiac's letters and ciphers. The story spread rather quickly after that, first by other regional outlets and then nationally. Here are some highlights. A team of international code breakers have solved a 51-year-old cipher. I hope you're having lots of fun in trying to catch me. I mean, that sounds very Zodiac to me. Today, the FBI confirmed that this cipher has been solved by private citizens. The killer's most cryptic message has finally been cracked. A 51-year-old cipher set by the Zodiac Killer. They've solved a decades-old cipher sent by the Zodiac Killer. New developments involving the Zodiac Killer and unraveling what's known as the 340 cipher. Coming up this week on Brian Ross Investigates, we'll meet the man who helped to break the coded message sent by the Zodiac serial killer. A coded message sent by the so-called Zodiac Killer has finally been broken. And only one message was decoded until this week. Three private citizens revealed the message behind the so-called 340 cipher. A group of intellectuals decoded a message from the Zodiac Killer. I hope this decryption may lead to better narrowing down who this person is. And then the story spread internationally. Well, the announcement about decoding the cipher was made by the FBI. Five men were dead, maybe nog veel more. Jetzt wird's erst richtig wild. Ich habe keine Angst vor der Gaskammer. O Zodiac Killer epanerchete sto proskinio. The encrypted messages sent by the Zodiac Killer. Aise hi ek 340 akshara ke gupt sandesh ko hatyare ne Zodiac Killer ei pachi mudalil terindu kollala. Послания Зодиака совместными усилиями расшифровали энтузиасты из США, Австралии и Бельгии. Серийного убийцы Зодиака код сломала группа. Let David Orenchak. One of the cryptic messages by the so-called Zodiac Killer has been solved by three code experts. Dr. Samuel Blake is that mathematician. He joins us now from Melbourne. This is an extraordinary discovery. It was such a long shot. It was a large problem of trial and error. I put up a page on my site to try to keep track of links to all the stories. If you want to check it out, the link is in the video description. Meanwhile, episode 5 was one of the top trending videos on YouTube for a while. It was also the top video on the video's subreddit. My daughter even noticed the story making its way into her Snapchat feed. It also made its way into many TikTok videos. I got some breaking news here. The Zodiac Killer cipher was just completely translated. By amateur code breakers, no less. And it only took them 51 years to figure it out. This is deeply unsettling. Okay, who had break the Zodiac Killer's cipher code on their 2020 bingo? You know a story is big once youth culture starts to notice it. One of my favorite responses to the story was from Texas Senator Ted Cruz. There's a long-running ridiculous joke that he is the Zodiac Killer. Favorite cereal? Cereal killer or cereal? <laughs> cereal. <laughs> 
so I laughed out loud when I saw his tweet responding to the news. Also that day, the FBI in San Francisco released a statement acknowledging the solution. The FBI is aware that a cipher attributed to the Zodiac Killer was recently solved by private citizens. The Zodiac Killer case remains an ongoing investigation for the FBI San Francisco Division and our local law enforcement partners. The Zodiac Killer terrorized multiple communities across Northern California and even though decades have gone by, we continue to seek justice for the victims of these brutal crimes. Due to the ongoing nature of the investigation and out of respect for the victims and their families, we will not be providing further comment at this time. As that day went on, we heard from several others in the crypto community who analyzed and confirmed our solution. One was Niels Kopel. I'm both a cryptomaniac and a crypto specialist. He runs a channel called Cryptography for Everybody. Go check it out, it's great. He quickly confirmed the solution in two videos on his channel. I also heard from Kevin Knight, a natural language processing expert and former USC professor of computer science. I was on his code team for the Zodiac show we did for the History Channel a few years back. He worked through and confirmed the solution. Go check out his brilliant new series about the mysterious and fascinating 3n plus 1 conjecture. George Lasry emailed me and said he's convinced our solution is correct. George is an incredible codebreaker. He's done many papers and presentations about his codebreaking adventures. He helped solve a very difficult double transposition cipher challenge, wrote a book about cracking classical ciphers, cracked and ciphered messages from World War I and World War II, and cracked other historical ciphers. Amazing work. Brax Sisko, one of the programmers who created ZK Decrypto, the code-breaking software that inspired Jarl's AZ Decrypt program, also confirmed the solution by untransposing it and plugging in our key in ZK Decrypto. Nick Pelling of CypherMysteries.com also ran through the details of our solution and confirmed it. Go visit his site if you want to learn about many other fascinating unsolved ciphers. Cypher expert Klaus Schmey, who has written many books about cryptography and unsolved ciphers, also posted our solution on his popular blog. He even awarded our team his annual Golden Alice Award for Best Decryption Achievement. Thank you, Klaus, for that honor. Professional crypt analyst Bill Breyer also took a close look at the solution and confirmed it. I met him and his wife at the NSA's Cryptologic History Symposium, where they gave several interesting talks. They have also been trying to crack the last unsolved cipher of the CIA's famous Kryptos sculpture. The solution was also confirmed by Fritz Reichmann, a programmer who also created his own codebreaking software to try to solve the Zodiac ciphers. He fed the transposed cipher into his codebreaking software, which independently arrived at the same solution. I also wanted to acknowledge Zodiac Killer site forum member Daikon, who, along with Jarl, independently discovered the period 19 phenomenon that led many of us down the path of looking at transposition schemes for this cipher. Thank you, Daikon, for sharing your insights. Many people have looked at the solution and there aren't many who doubt its accuracy. But there is still debate about how the 340 was made. Reading the message requires a peculiar reading rule, where you read off a letter, then move one row down, then two to the right. The knight piece in chess can move the same way. So many people have suggested the 340 might be some kind of knight's tour encryption, where reading the message is like following the movements of a knight through a chessboard. Others suggest he made the cipher using an ancient transposition method called skittily. It's a very simple method using a cylinder and a strip of parchment or paper. I'll demonstrate using a pencil as the cylinder and a small strip of paper. First you wind the paper around the cylinder. And then you write your message from left to right like this. I'll use the message, please send reinforcements. And then you unwind the paper and now the message doesn't make sense. To decipher it you have to wind it back around the cylinder and the cylinder has to be the right thickness. We can try this method with Zodiac's message from the 340. It looks close, but you end up having to fix problems, which makes the encoding process more complicated. 
There is a much easier way to encode the plain text. We don't know if this is exactly how Zodiac did it, but it's a simple way to produce the cipher. It's so simple anyone can do it. Let's look at the entire message he wanted to encipher. For simplicity, we'll keep the various spelling errors he made. He split the message into three pieces. Now let's look at the first piece. It has this message. I hope you are having lots of fun and trying to catch me. That wasn't me on the TV show, which brings up a point about me. I am not afraid of the gas chamber because it will send me to paradise, all the. Let's rewrite it without spaces into a grid with 17 columns. So now it looks like this. Now let's rewrite it again, but this time, let's write it along the columns instead of the rows, like this. The resulting message is not readable in the normal direction, but it still makes sense if you read it along the columns instead of the rows. Next, let's split the grid in half along the diagonal into two triangular sections like this. Now we create another grid that is split in half the same way, but the triangles are flipped around. Let's write the first triangle into the same triangle in the other grid. Notice how it's the same text, but now it's lined up along the right side instead of the left side. Then we do the same thing for the second triangle. The letters inside that triangle are now lined up on the left side, instead of the right side. And that's the final result for the first section of the message. After applying the substitution key we discovered, that's the exact way the plain text was arranged. To get the message back to how it looked when we started, we could apply the reading rule from the previous video. That is, we could start at the first letter, then move down one position and write two positions, like the movements of the knight piece in chess. Or, we can just draw our triangles back and reverse the process we just went through. Then, we can simply read the message along the columns. So that takes care of the first section. Zodiac did the same thing for the second section, but he had some twists. Here's the message from the second section. Sooner because I now have enough slaves to work for me, where everyone else has nothing when they reach paradise, so they are afraid of death. I am not afraid because I know that my new Again, let's rewrite it without spaces into a grid of 17 columns. We are going to rewrite the message along columns again, but with the first twist. He wrote the words, life is, in the upper right corner of the grid. So now we write the message along columns. When we get to the words, life is, we just write around them. Now we are ready to split it up into triangles again. Here's our new grid, with the triangles flipped around. Let's copy the text from the first triangle. Then copy the text from the second triangle. Now at this point, we should have been done. But this is where Zodiac's second twist comes in. For some reason, when he copied the second triangle, he left out this H. So the H is gone from here. Which means he shifted all these letters, R-A-T-E-N-Y, one spot to the left. And he also shifted all these letters, R-N-O-S-R-V-S, one spot to the left. This left a blank spot at the end, which is where the missing H ended up. And now we have the final result for the second section of Zodiac's message. Now let's look at how he set up the third and final section of his message. It says, Life will be an easy one in paradise, death. Once again, let's write it without spaces into a 17 column grid. Instead of doing something strange with triangles, he decided simply to reverse some of the words. Life B, N, 1, in, and paradise. And that's it. We finished the third section and have completed the transpositions for all three sections of plain text. Here's what all three sections look like when put together. To produce the final cipher, we need to assign cipher symbols to all the letters. We finished the transposition step and now can do the substitution step. 
Since this is a homophonic cipher, some letters can be assigned to more than one symbol. For example, let's start by looking at all the A's in the message, highlighted here in yellow. The cipher key says that we can use any of these five symbols to represent the letter A. K, backwards L, O, crosshairs symbol, and left filled square. We don't know yet exactly how he picked which symbol to use for each A, but we'll go through all the assignments he did. Here are all the K's, then the backwards L's, then the O's, and the crosshairs symbols, and finally the left filled square. Now you can see that every A in the message has been replaced with one of these five cipher symbols. We can keep going for the rest of the letters. Here are all the B's in his message. Zodiac decided they should be replaced with backwards F and the empty square. Here are all the C's. He decided they can all be replaced with the backwards P. You get the point. I'll run the animation showing all the remaining assignments for the rest of the plain text letters. We're done. This is the result. His 340 character cipher that confounded the world with annoying busy work for 51 years. So I've shown how the 340 might have been put together. It's a pretty straightforward process. The steps aren't too complicated. Is it the exact way Zodiac created the cipher? I don't know. It may be impossible to know. Maybe there's another encoding method that is simpler than the one I've showed. Or maybe he wasn't guided by simplicity and he really made it in a way that was more complicated than necessary. Most people accept that this solution is correct. I think this is because they can easily reproduce the message by going through the same decryption steps we described in episode 5. But a few people still express doubts because we had to manipulate the cipher before the message could be fully recovered. First, he rewrote the cipher based on a simple diagonal reading scheme. Then we had to make two adjustments to the second section to make it decode properly. Finally, we had to reverse some words in the third section to finalize the solution. I've seen other solution attempts that turned out to be wrong, where people go through several steps to make messages appear. So, why is ours right and theirs wrong? I think the main reason is because our manipulations are very limited and don't add significant information to the decoding process. The steps are simple and systematic, familiar to people who study cryptography, and result in an understandable 340 character long message. The chances are extremely low that so few manipulations would result in a, such a long coherent message that just happens to be wrong. Many other solutions I've seen require a lot of information to be added to the solving process or generate a lot of ambiguous messages that can have many interpretations. They relax too many rules in the decryption process, which makes it easier to find messages that aren't really there. One guy wrote a book about his solution and was so certain about his result that he offered $10,000 to anyone who could prove him wrong. I wonder if he will honor his wager. I hope he gives his money to charity. Anyway, in cryptography there's a mathematical idea called unicity distance, which is how long a cipher has to be before it is guaranteed to only have one unique readable solution. I think the 340 cipher is long enough to satisfy this guarantee, but it will take further research to calculate its exact unicity distance. I hope we see a paper about this in the future. There are a few more points I want to make about the solution. Hundreds of people have pointed out ways to improve the message. It makes more sense if you take the words life is from the second section and combine them with the word death from the end of the third section. So the end of the message now says, my new life will be an easy one in paradise. Life is death. That's the most common suggestion people have made. Others have suggested maybe Zodiac meant to say, death is life. Or maybe, my new life will be an easy one. In paradise, life is death. Or maybe, my new life will be an easy one. In paradise, death is life. Or, my new life will be an easy one. Death is life in paradise. So there's some room for interpretation, but I prefer the simple explanation that life is death is a separate statement at the end. One small fact about the 340's message is that Zodiac could not have written it before October 22, 1969. This is because his message refers to a TV show that aired that day. His first cipher, the 408, was solved about two and a half months before that. 
Did he start working on the 340 during that time? Well, if he did, he didn't start with the message we discovered. He sent the 340 on November 8, 1969. If the TV show inspired him to start making the 340, then he had about two weeks to make it. I wonder how long he was thinking about new ways to hide his message. Did he come up with those ideas during those two weeks? Or during the full two and a half months after the 408 was solved? By the way, I also updated my Cypher Explorer tool to include the new solution to the 340. If you haven't seen this, it's a tool that lets you view and mark up the ciphers. I use it a lot when I'm making my videos. Now you can click on ciphers and there are several options for the 340. First, the original 340, then the 340 untransposed, and the 340 plain text showing the transposed message after the substitution key is applied. Then the 340 plain text untransposed showing the final readable message. If you want to copy any of them, click on edit, then copy cipher text. Then you can paste the text somewhere else. I'll put the link to the Cypher Explorer tool in the video description. Some of you may remember an old tool I made called the Zodiac Web Toy. It lets you try to decode the 340 yourself. You can plug in your own substitutions. A lot of people used it to try to find solutions to the 340, but it turned out to be useless because it assumes the 340 was just a simple substitution without transpositions. So, um, sorry about that? Some people wanted to know the settings we used in Jarl's AZ Decrypt software to crack the 340. It was the latest version, 1.19, and I used Jarl's Reddit 6 grams, which come bundled with the software. I ran it in a Windows 10 virtual machine running inside my MacBook Pro laptop. The virtual machine only has 6 gigs of RAM allocated to it, so you don't need a very powerful computer to crack the 340 with AZ Decrypt. A faster computer with tons of RAM is obviously better in general for code breaking, but we managed to go through 650,000 variations of the 340 in a reasonable amount of time with a modest little computer. This is a testament to how good Jarl is as a programmer. He made a very fast and efficient piece of code breaking software. Speaking of Jarl, it turns out that he came very, very close on his own to discovering the solution all the way back in May of 2020. He had the transposition scheme right except for the last two lines and the small adjustments to the second section. He was really on the right track, but unfortunately AZ Decrypt didn't produce a high scoring solution, so he moved on from it because it didn't catch his attention. He was so close. After we all finally cracked the 340, Jarl revisited his earlier experiment, ran AZ Decrypt with different settings, and it got even closer to the real plain text. Here you can see it has parts of the final solution. I hope you were having lots of trying to catch me, the TV show which brings up a point about me, afraid of the gas chamber because it will, because slaves to work for me, he has nothing when they reach. This is a great example of why experiments sometimes have to be repeated. Jarl's experiment didn't produce a good result at the time, but now we know that different AZ decrypt settings would have made a more noticeable solution. And when I ran Sam's hundreds of thousands of cipher variations, we didn't notice anything special until we repeated the experiments with some small changes. It's really easy to miss pay dirt if you're not careful. Another interesting question that came up was, given how many steps were needed to unravel the cipher, could Codebreakers back in 1969 have solved it? My guess is, probably not, unless many more resources had been dedicated to the problem. During World War II, for example, there was a lot of incentive to decrypt secret messages, so a lot of money and effort were dedicated to breaking ciphers like Enigma and the Japanese cipher called Purple. Breaking a code from a serial killer, on the other hand, is not quite as important as winning a world war, so I don't think it received as much attention. Now we know that the 340 took so long to decrypt because it was split into sections and had some disruptions in the transposition scheme. Codebreakers back in 1969 would have had to, number one, guess where the sections were, Number two, figure out where the disruptions were. And finally, number three, figure out the substitution key. So it was possible for 1969 codebreakers to solve, but I think not likely. Nowadays, we really benefited from making modern computers do a lot of the grunt work in exploring hundreds of thousands of different ideas. Here's an interesting observation from Sean on Mike Morford's Zodiac Forum. This is the raw plain text of the 340 before rearranging it to make it more readable. In the second to last line, the name Belli appears in reverse. 
Melvin Belli was the lawyer who appeared on the Jim Dunbar TV show Zodiac is referring to in the 340's message. This is a very interesting coincidence. Did Zodiac intentionally make this connection in the plain text? This is open to debate. I don't know how it could be proved one way or the other. I'm interested in hearing about any other interesting coincidences like this you can find in the 340 cipher and plain text. Feel free to send them via comments or emails. Here's something else people have been pointing out. For his previous letters, Zodiac often wrote, please rush to editor on the envelopes. In the envelope that had his 340 cipher, he wrote the same thing, but diagonally. We can't decode the 340 without taking a diagonal transposition into account. So maybe this was a clue from Zodiac. His next two letters also had diagonal writing. The next year on his Halloween card, he wrote some words horizontally and vertically. Then on the back of the envelope, he wrote, sorry, no cipher along diagonals. Was Zodiac giving hints about the construction of his 340 cipher? Seems like it, but will we ever know for sure? Here is another tidbit about the 340 solution. The key to his first cipher, the 408, is very different from the key to the 340. But there are a few symbols that decode the same way in both ciphers. In both ciphers, D decodes to N, N decodes to E, P decodes to I, backwards K also decodes to I, and backwards L decodes to A. Maybe it's just another coincidence, but I'm still interested in the question of how Zodiac came up with his symbol assignments. What was his process? Did he have a system or was he just picking symbols randomly? The 340 solution has sparked a lot of interest in solving Zodiac's final two unsolved ciphers, the 13 character cipher and the 32 character cipher. People are also taking another look at the last 18 letters of the first solved cipher, the 408. A lot of people are trying things like taking the key to the 340 now that we know it and trying to apply it to those ciphers. Those three ciphers are all very short, so it will be nearly impossible to prove which solutions are correct. But who knows, maybe someone will get lucky. People are also looking closely at the 340's solution and key, with the hope that some other message might be hidden somehow, such as the Zodiac's real name or other useful information. It's a long shot, but it can't hurt to look. There are still a lot of questions I'm interested in about the 340, but I'll explore them in the next videos. For example, which clues in the 340 actually turned out to be meaningful, and which were wild goose chases? <laughs> Did Zodiac assign the cipher symbols randomly, or did he have a system? Did he put some clues in the cipher on purpose? And did he make encoding mistakes on purpose? Where did Zodiac learn how to make a cipher like this with its strange transposition system? Finding a solution for the 340 is definitely not the end of the code-breaking story for the Zodiac case. I'll leave those questions for upcoming episodes. For now, I will say... Thanks for joining me, and I appreciate all the kind and supportive comments you've been sending to me, Sam, and Jarl. Hit the like button and subscribe to this channel to help support our continuing efforts. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.